Hey there. I just wanted to take a second to explain some of the math games that you could play with your kiddo or your kiddo could play by themselves. So here are a few. I'm going to switch my screen over. So you're not going to see me anymore, but you will see how to play these games. Hopefully if I click everything right, here we go. Okay. So the first game is called Domino War, and it's just like the card game war, only you're going to be using math facts. Okay, so for starters, you have a player one and you have a player two. You will separate the dominoes like you would pass out cards until they were all gone. So the first thing that you do is both players would turn over a domino, okay? And then they're going to multiply these facts. So player one has six times six is 36. Player two has five times four is 20. Because 36 is higher than 20, player one would get the both of those dominoes, okay? And then you keep playing over and over again until eventually one player is going to have all the dominoes versus the other player. When that happens, the game is over. Or if maybe you are a little bit busy and you cannot or don't have time to play with your student or your kiddo at that time, they could treat these like flashcards and just grab one, flip it over, and practice the fact. Make sure they're saying it out loud, though, so that you can check and make sure that they're accurate. Five times three is 15. Okay? So that's one thing you could do with dominoes. And if you don't have any dominoes, no worries. A deck of cards, you can do almost the exact same thing. Now, this deck is definitely not full, but this is just for the demonstration. You would take a deck of cards. Um, make sure that you take out the jacks, the queens, and the kings first. Keep the aces because they represent the number one. But you would pass out the cards until all the cards are gone. Okay? And once they're all passed out, you do the, well, you do similar things. One of two things, actually. The first type of game that you could play was would be the kind of like a race. You would flip the first card only, and whoever said the fact first would get the cards. So if you were looking at the two and the six, the player who hollered out 12 first would get those cards. Or if you didn't want to make it into a race because maybe they're not quite quick enough yet, you could flip both flip over two cards, and then once again, whoever had that higher product would get the cards. So this player has 2 times 8, 16. This one has 6 times 4, 24. The product 24 is bigger than 16, so they would get all the cards. And then once again, you just keep playing until all the cards are gone. Or once again, your kiddo could just practice saying, um, practice math facts by flipping over two and saying the answer. Make sure they're saying it out loud, though, so that you can check for accuracy. Because there's no point in practicing the game if they're not going to practice the correct facts. Okay? Another thing you could do with the cards is you could, um, it's called spiral multiplication. This one's kind of fun because you get to just, like, um, take the cards and create your own game board. So the kiddos can make a, into, like, a little spiral or like a little swirl, so it just kind of would keep going into each other. Remember, this is a small deck, so once you had a, a once you have a bigger deck, it would actually be like a funner game because it would just be just kind of take over the whole floor or your kitchen table or whatever. Um, next, you and and this one has to be played with a partner, so you can play with whatever kind of tokens that you um, you have around the house. I have a penny and a nickel here. You can play with buttons or beans or paper clips or something. Just make sure that they're different. So each player knows which pawn is their own. And then you would need a dice. Okay, so player one is going to start. They would roll the dice and they would get a six. If player one can accurately tell the math fact between the dice and the card they're on, they move this number of spaces. So if I was player one and I had an eight and a six and I said 48, I would get to move six spots, including where I'm at. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, player two's turn. Now let's pretend player two does not know this fact. Okay, three times eight. They either guess wrong or they don't know. They just don't get to move forward any because they didn't get the math fact right. Okay, so that one's spiral multiplication. And then, of course, once they get to the very end, that would be the winner. So that one's called spiral multiplication. The kiddos like this one. It's a different way to practice their math facts. Okay, next we can use those same dice whoops, to create, let's see, if you're playing with your, your child, we'll have a P for a parent and an S for student. 
um, you would take turns rolling the dice. So let's pretend I'm the parent. I roll the dice and multiply my fact together. Five times four is 20. Okay, and then it's the student's turn. Six times two is 12. Parent's turn. Six times one is six. Now I can add these until my next turn. You could play the first one to 50 wins, um, or you can have your um, your kiddo play all by themselves, and after they get to 100, they can stop practicing. But once again, make sure you're checking those facts because if they're practicing them wrong, then there's no point in practicing them, okay? Uh, I'm gonna flip it over and show you another game. This is um, something that I call multiplication dice bingo. However, it's actually more similar to tic-tac-toe and bingo at the same time. So first you make your tic-tac-toe board. This, these are the numbers that you're allowed, you're allowed to use. Um, I'm gonna give you a second. If you wanna pause it and write these numbers down, you can because it only works with these numbers. So make sure you write them down. Okay, you will need two dice and you'll roll the dice and multiply the numbers together, okay? So any product that you'll get from rolling any of these numbers side by side is on this paper, okay? Only those numbers though. Now fill in your squares with numbers. Um, my favorite number is eight, uh, my daughter's two, my son is four, um, I just like the number 24, I'll do three, I'll do 10, I'll do 12, I'll do 36. Make sure you don't use any of them twice and I can use 18. Okay, so if you and your kiddo make a board, make sure they're not the same board. You don't wanna have the same because it's kind of like bingo in the sense that all the boards are different. You'll go ahead and take turns. You can take turns rolling if you want to or one of you can just be the roller, okay? I have four times one. Oh, I have that one. Six times two, I have that one too. Oh look, I'm so close to having a little bingo. So what you can do is you can have um, the winner be the first to get one bingo or two bingos or to get the entire board filled up, okay? So you can play that either way. But once again, if you wanna write these, these numbers down, this game, if you use these kinds of dice, there's there's some that have multiple numbers on them, but a six, a six sided dice, um, use these numbers to go for it. So I'll give you a second to pause it here again and write those down just in case you haven't. And then last but not least, of course, if you don't have access to any of those things, you can just do traditional flash flashcards. And you can make these on paper yourself or the dollar store has these for like a dollar. You can just buy some flashcards and have your student practice. Once again, it's so important to monitor their practice because if they're practicing wrong facts, then it does no good to practice. Okay, I'm gonna come back to my screen here. Okay, here I am. Um, I just think that maybe sometimes during math, your kiddo might need a break. They might need to just do some hands-on stuff or even practice for after supper or you know when it's not school time. Those are just some fun games that you could play with your kiddo or your kiddo could play on their own. If you don't have access to at least one of these resources, please let me know because I would be super happy to get it to you um, any way that I could. So I hope you enjoyed, I hope you play these games and I hope you guys have a great rest of the day, bye.